Welcome to this lesson on rendering, where we will actually light and render this so we can see it as a movie like this is. So let's jump into Maya. And so we need to also create a camera for ourselves. But for right now, let's just go ahead and get the render and the shader started so then we can see what we're dealing with and then get the camera going. So first off, we need to assign a new shader to this. So the first thing we need to do though, is we need to make sure that it's gonna export the vertex colors. And what that means is, you know, the MASH network is coloring this based on vertex colors. And for an Arnold shader to pick that up, we need to make sure that it is exporting that. So if I go click on the mesh, the repro mesh here of the actual geometry in question here, and I go down to the Arnold tab here, you can find export vertex colors. So you turn that on. Now we can assign a new material. Let me just do that a little higher so you can see. Assign new material and let go. And then you can go down to the Arnold shader. If you don't have, if you can't see Arnold, you need to go to Windows Settings Preferences Plugin Manager and turn on M to A, which is down here in the bottom. M to A, it's loaded, so we have it as an option. Make sure that's loaded, then do an AI standard surface. So now it turns white and we need to pipe in the vertex colors that MASH is exporting for us. And they do that by labeling it as a color set. Well, I don't mean to dock that. Uh, they do that by labeling that as a color set. So I have the geometry selected. I want to access the shader that we just assigned to it in the hyper shade here. So I click this little button and it maps what we have selected, uh, the shader associated with the selection. And then I'm going to type in user data. I don't know why this is so scrunched up there and why I can't pull that over. There we go. User data color is the one we want. AI user data color. So if we click that one time, it'll put it in here and we can just pipe that right into the base color. And then in this node, it pops up an attribute and we can just type in color set. And that's just kind of some tricky behind the scenes stuff that Maya is doing. So when we render this, we need some lights first before we can see what we're doing, but we've set up the shader initially here. So let's introduce some lights. And I, the first one I wanna introduce is with a dome light or a sky dome light. So you can go to Arnold. If you can't see the Arnold tab, uh, you should be able to see it and everything. Again, you wanna make sure plugin manager, it's loaded in. So go to lights, sky dome light. And now we have the sky dome light attributes. And for color, let's map in a image. So what a sky dome light is doing is if we scale way back here, you can, you can see there's a new sphere there. What it's gonna do is say, light from every direction basically uh, with a color of white but we want to pipe in an image or a high dynamic range image hdri into the color attribute so it mimics real world physics and lighting and reflections and the best way to find uh, hdris for free is a website called hdri haven and just click on hdris and click one of these, whichever one you like. They have examples with spheres here with different types of materials assigned to them. And just click them and download them. I think I'm choosing Approaching Storm for mine. Just click one of these, download it. And now when you click the little checker box here and we choose File to pipe into that, we have now the File tab open in the Ashbury Editor. Now we can map with this folder button to the HDRI, which I put in the source images folder here of the project. Remember way back when, when we set the project, we can keep all of the files in here together. And so it makes it really easy to find stuff. So now we have that and we can see it behind us. So, and all around. And so it's the easiest way to be able to um, kind of rotate this around to be in the right direction facing the right direction. What I wanna make sure is the brightest spot is kind of coming off at a three quarter angle. It looks like it's kind of straight on. But anyway, that's enough to go off of right now. The other thing I wanna do in the Sky Dome Light settings is turn camera to one, or sorry, camera to zero from one. One's the default meaning one, it's, it's visible in the render and zero, it's not gonna be visible. So now when we go to Arnold open render view and we preview this, 
we should be able to see our render. And of course we need to turn off, uh, let, let's go into, there's a lot we need to change because <laughs> it's so tiny. First off, let's go into the render settings right here. It's this little clapperboard with a gear wheel. And let's make sure that we have maybe something HDRI, uh, HDR, bleh, HD 720. I'm trying to say HDRI, even though I'm, I'm just now saying that. So three, two, these are the settings. We'll kind of go over this a little bit more later, but I wanted to make sure we're rendering at 720. And then under the uh, open, uh, the render view options here, there's a test resolution area. And I wanna go 100%. I wanna see this at 720. So now when we do it, it should be a lot bigger and we should be able to see it much more clearly. So we have our image rendered and we can see the color and everything. And so it's kind of off to a good start. The thing that we need to get rid of is seeing this plane and these cones and we need to assign shaders to the spheres and the trails. So there's a little more work to do. And in the next lesson, we will get into more detail on that. But this main one, I just wanted to make sure, you know, you understood the little ins and outs of adding the user data color to the standard surface shader. That's the main thing to take away from this lesson. And the next one, we will continue to add more shaders and refine this render. Thanks for watching.